everyone. Welcome to the first live virtual program hosted by Palm Springs Public Library. I'm Jeannie Kays, Library Director for the Palm Springs Public Library and your host for this Zoom program. I will introduce our guest speaker in just a moment, but first I want to go over some technical guidelines and tips and tricks for this session. First of all, this lecture is being recorded so that it can be viewed at a later date by you or others who are unable to watch live. The recording will be posted on the Palm Springs Public Library's YouTube channel. All of your cameras and microphones are off. This means you can enjoy the program without distraction. If you have a question for the speaker, please type your question in the chat box and we will go through questions either at stopping points during the lecture or at the end of the presentation. If you're having technical difficulties, here are some tips. Check your computer volume to make sure it is turned on, not muted, and is at a comfortable level. You might consider wearing earbuds or headphones if the sound is hard to hear. If you have difficulty on your computer, you can also watch this on a smartphone or tablet. Additionally, you can call in and just listen to the program without video. Remember, this is being recorded, so you can go back later and re review the content. If you open the participants window, you will see buttons that say yes, no, go slower, go faster, more, and clear all. This is a way to communicate with us if we ask a question, a yes or no question, or if you want to give feedback. Again, be sure to type your questions in the chat box and we will try to get to everyone's questions. Thank you for participating and we hope you enjoy this virtual program. We look forward to presenting more virtual programs in the future. Check our event calendar on our website, pslibrary.org, or sign up for our e-newsletter and like us on Facebook. Thank you for your support. Our program today is Medicare 101, Medicare Made Simple. Our guest speaker, uh, our guest speaker is Musya Witkes, an America's Health Insurance Plan Certified Representative. And I'm sorry, I knew I was gonna mess it up. So tell us your name and uh, have at it. So welcome. I'll say Witkes, thank you, Jeannie. Okay, so uh, my name is Musya Witkes. I um, let's just see one second here. Okay, I do want to just um, repeat about any questions, just type it into the chat box, make sure it says it's going to everyone. And or it doesn't have to go to everyone, it can go directly to me. And then that way I can see it and I'll be able to answer questions as we go along. Um, here we are. Okay, so here's our Medicare 101. Um, I am actually a, I was born and grew up in Palm Springs. Um, I lived here most of my life, but not my entire life. <laughs> and I'm happy to be living here now. Um, I am honored and very excited to be doing this presentation for the Palm Springs Public Library, where I grew up. <laughs> um, having said that, I will get right into the Medicare. So I am a licensed insurance agent. I'm contracted with all the carriers, all the insurance companies in the area who have Medicare plans, you know, that use agents. So um, I do have a lot of the inside information, if you will, on each of the plans. And that's kind of nice when you're trying to figure out what the differences are with all the plans available. So what we're gonna do today is go through basically how Medicare works, what to look out for, um, you know, open enrollment is starting, sort of starts today, but officially starts on October 15th. And so we're gonna go over what to look out for, uh, what's important and how the basic system works. Um, it is somewhat confusing, especially for those who are aging into Medicare. Um, it is a different insurance system than what, you, than what you're used to, uh, you know, before Medicare. Um, so I'm going to try to make it as clear and simple as possible. But with Medicare, with insurance plans in general, it's important to remember that each person is different. Every person has different needs. Every person has, every person has a different medical history. 
and different lifestyle and budget. So people ask me all the time, well, which plan is the best plan? Because that's obviously the one I want. The answer is there is not just one plan that's the best plan. Because like I said, every person has a different budget, different needs for medication, hospitals, everyone has different doctors, specialists, um, you know, and all those different things are very important to take into account when it comes to choosing an insurance plan. You don't want to just go with the plan that your neighbor or best friend or spouse took because it works for them. If they're taking different medications or they have any, if anything doesn't match with your life, you need to really take all those details into account before choosing a plan. They're all important. Medications, I mean, you can have a really great plan, but if you're taking one medication that's not covered, it's no longer gonna be a good plan when your medication's just not covered at all, okay? And you end up paying $1,000 out of pocket for it. That's what, that would not be fun. So it's very important to make sure that when you're looking for a plan, it's unique to your needs. Um, so like I said, I am licensed, I'm certified and trained to understand how Medicare works. Every year as agents, we spend over 80 hours obtaining certifications. This is from year to year. The laws in the industry change all the time and we have to recertify from year to year. So there's a, a AHIP exam that we take annually and then every company that we certify with we have to take exams with them as well and do trainings every year. Um, I, I do work as an agent. I don't charge for any of my services. Um, and being an agent does not just mean I help people find plans. What's important is that I'm available for my clients throughout the year, not just during the annual enrollment period. So anytime someone goes to a doctor or pharmacy, they have questions, they don't know you know, what, what do I do about this? What does that mean? I, I need transportation. I don't know who to call. They call me and I'm available to help throughout the year. Okay. Um, part of the AHIP training is the fraud, waste, and abuse training that we do as well. And I am trained to use the Medicare.gov website that helps to compare prescriptions, the cost of drugs on the various plans and different types of plans as well. Okay, top 10 Medicare questions. What is Medicare? Who can get Medicare? How much does Medicare cover? What does it cover? What does it cost? Where can I get more coverage? How do I choose? When can I enroll? When can I change my coverage? How can I save money? And where can I go for help? We're gonna try to cover all of these. Okay, when are you eligible for Medicare? When you are at least 65 years old. And when I say at least 65, you wanna work on this a few months prior, um, but from when you're 65 years old and you are a US citizen or a legal resident who has lived in the US for at least five consecutive years, you are eligible for Medicare. Another situation is someone who is under 65 but has been on disability uh, generally for 24 months. In some situations, depending on the reason for disability, it can be less time. Um, those are reasons that someone would be eligible for Medicare. When can you enroll in a Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plan? Okay, so the way it works with Medicare, the initial, I wanna say the next slide has this. Okay, here's Medicare's initial enrollment period. Three months before you turn 65. Now, when they look at the month, you're talking about, it doesn't matter what time, what day in the month you were born. If it's from the second day of the month and on, you wanna start everything three months in advance. If your birthday is on the first of the month, then everything can take effect a month prior. Um, don't worry about those details, but at least three months before your birthday month is when you wanna sign up for Medicare. Um, once you have, your Medicare number, that's when you can then sign up for Advantage plans, drug plans, Medicare supplements, and so on. And we'll go into what all of that means. So don't worry about that right now. Um, you do have the three months prior through the three months after the birthday month to sign up. 
Um, do bear in mind that if you sign up in your birthday month or after, the effective date will not necessarily be the next month, okay? So it does get pushed off. It's always best to sign up at least, you know, the months prior to your birthday month as soon as possible from the first day you're able to sign up. Um, I'm gonna go back here for a minute. Um, okay, so, okay, we pretty much covered when you can sign up. So it's a little bit different between the Medicare and then the Medicare plans. So there's Medicare itself and then the Advantage plans and drug plans and so on. Um, but you have those, you have that seven month period to sign up. Um, there are some discrepancies depending on if your Medicare Part A and B have the same effective date. So be sure to speak to an agent, someone who's trained to understand the enrollment periods and when to sign up because, uh, because they do vary depending on if those dates are the same or not. Oftentimes when someone is working and has employment coverage, they may not want to get Medicare Part B right away, in which case they will then have A and B with two different effective dates and that can uh, change when they're allowed to sign up for a plan. So that's that. Now, original Medicare has two parts. There's part A, which is hospital insurance, and part B, which is medical insurance. It's basically everything medical that's outside of the hospital, okay? So that's pretty much what we have here, hospital on the one side, Medicare on the other. Now, anyone who has worked and paid into Medicare, so there is a little, uh, detail there that's important because some people pay taxes and don't pay into Medicare depending on the type of work they do, um, especially teachers that works with teachers quite a bit if they work for a school district. Um, if they paid into Medicare for at least 40 quarters, then Part A would have no premium. So that's a zero dollar premium because you have already paid into it. Now what Part A covers with the hospital, so you'll see that it's zero dollar for most people, it has a deductible, so $1,408 per benefit period, up to 60 days. And then there's additional co-payments or co-insurance that you'd be responsible for once the deductible has been met, okay? So usually the first 60 days, there will not be a cost, but after that, there's a daily cost of the 352. These numbers do change, um, you know, usually from year to year, so bear that in mind. Um, and then there's the lifetime reserve days, 60 days. So that's another out of pocket right there. Um, and now with these, with straight Medicare, there is no out of pocket limit. Okay. And I'm going to go into that a little bit more in just a minute. Um, now what I said specifically about teachers is that there are a lot of teachers who work for the school district. Um, I'm just responding to a question here. Uh, Medicare specifically um, because there's a different system of how they pay uh, with Social Security and all of that. So not every teacher in the school district, even if they worked for years, necessarily paid into Medicare in all those years. And sometimes they don't find that out until it's like time for, you know, to sign up for benefits. And then they're like, you know, they say, no, you didn't work enough. But really they work, they just didn't pay into it. So that's important. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Did everybody get that? I'm not sure if that was, looks like I was muted for a minute. Um, okay. If that was not clear or I was muted, please let me know and I will go over it. Um, okay. So that's part A. Now going back to, okay, part B, here we are, one second. Okay, so someone asked what about quarters. So technically it's like 10, 40 quarters means working for 10 years and paying taxes into Medicare for those 10 years. It goes by quarters because sometimes it's not consecutive, um, but that's what it means, uh, you know, to earn, to, to have paid in for, for 40 quarters, okay? So it's, uh, it's basically ten, the equivalent of 10 years of paying into Medicare. Now, moving along to Part B of Medicare, it covers medical. Um, there are certain things also with a Part A that Medicare covers. For example, 
a skilled nursing facility, they don't cover an unlimited amount and everything they cover has to be approved by Medicare. So in other words, Medicare needs to determine that something's medically necessary for it to be covered, okay? So having said that, onto the Part B, it has a monthly premium. Right now it's $144.60 per month. And the reason it says for most people is because it is income related. So that's the base amount. Um, anyone who's earning, who's in, an, in a higher earning bracket will have a higher premium. So that's something that Social Security determines. There are charts for that. So that's the kind of thing if you, uh, you know, spoke with me one-on-one, uh, -on -one, that's something I can help you determine. They generally, generally look at your tax returns from two years prior to determine your monthly premium. So with that, we have the monthly premium, the Part B. So on medical, there is a deductible of 198 for the year. And after you meet the deductible, you are responsible for 20% of all costs for anything that's approved and covered by Medicare. In addition, the excess charges, uh, that is when a doctor accepts Medicare and wants to charge more than the Medicare amount. They are allowed to do that and you are responsible for the, the excess charge, okay? What Medicare does not cover. And again, with the Part B, there's no out-of-pocket limit. What does that mean? If somebody had a sudden heart attack, and that meant the hospitalization and obviously a whole bunch of tests, right? And procedures, surgeries, who knows what. They can easily run uh, doc, uh, medical bills up to 100, even more than $100,000 in a year, in one year. You would be responsible for 20% of that with straight Medicare. And because of that, we want to supplement with something else. We want something else to cover that so that your responsibility is not uh, so risky, okay? You don't want to have that not knowing if your medical bills will reach so high and you'll be responsible for that 20%. So that's very important. Um, so sorry here, okay. Yeah, so that's important to remember is that you want something that will secure your finances and you can rest assured that you have good coverage and no chance of having crazy out-of-pocket expenses. Okay. Okay, so we have two options for more coverage. The first option is to go with, to keep the original, well, everyone would keep their original Medicare. However, you would use the original Medicare and go with the Medicare supplement plan you see in the red box on top, Medicare supplement, in addition to a Medicare Part D plan, which is a drug plan. Okay, the other option is to go with an Advantage plan, and we'll go through the differences uh, between those two, those two options. A Medicare supplement functions as a PPO. It allows you to see any doctor and go to any hospital within the United States that accepts Medicare. There are some exceptions to this, not many, but there are some doctors who are very strongly connected or work for a medical group. And those doctors have the right to say, we're not taking patients who have HMOs, or I'm sorry, who have uh, PPOs or Medicare supplements. We only want patients who are within our medical group. That can happen. However, for the most part with the Medicare supplement, you know, you go to any big hospital and you want to see their doctors throughout the country. Um, a lot of the, uh, there most, most doctors you will have no problem seeing. You do not need referrals to see specialists. Um, they say technically that you don't need, I mean, you will need approval on certain things for, for the Medicare supplement. Uh, one second. Okay. Um, now with this, with the Medicare supplement, the way it works is there are different plan types. So this gets a little confusing because Medicare has different parts and then the Medicare supplements have different plans. So Medicare has a part A, B, C, and D and Medicare supplements have plans such as plan F, plan G, as in George, plan N, um, and there, there are more as well. Um, so try to uh, take note of the difference. There's the parts and the plan. So with Medicare supplement, there are different plan types. Uh, right now for people who are 
people who became eligible for Medicare after January of 2020, um, the richest benefit package would be the Plan G, as in George, and that plan, basically what it has is the medical deductible that you would be responsible for. So right now it's 198. It does, it can and likely will change from year to year. Um, it's, it's not always a huge jump. I mean, it's low to begin with. Uh, the last couple of years it went up $15 and $3. So there's no telling. It's something that we find out from Medicare, uh, CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. They determine what the deductible is. Once you have met your deductible with this Medicare supplement, you are covered. For anything covered by Medicare, you're covered at 100%. So essentially, you have no out-of-pocket once you've met your deductible. These plans do have monthly premiums. Um, now, what's nice about this is that from carrier to carrier, so that's from insurance company to insurance company, the plan types will be the same. So the plan F with say United Healthcare has to have the same benefits as a plan F with Anthem Blue Cross. Same with the plan G, their G and G will look the same. Now there are some companies who have uh, extra benefits that they put in with some plans. So they might charge you a little more in premium, the monthly cost, but they might give you a little bit of vision, um, a little bit of hearing benefit, you know, for hearing aids and exams and so on. Um, generally speaking, Medicare supplements, their purpose is to supplement Medicare. So you won't see a whole bunch of non-medical benefits included. It's usually gonna be quite limited. You may see a, a gym membership attached to it, which is nice. Um, you know, some discounts and sometimes those extra benefits I spoke about for that extra little premium. However, it, you're not going to see dental and, uh, you know, chiropractic here and acupuncture and, you know, all those other things, okay? That's pretty much the Medicare supplement. Um, one other thing that's important with the Medicare supplement is that when you turn 65 or first become eligible, you know, with, for Medicare, Part A and B, then, then you will have access, you know, complete access to any of those plans, regardless of your health history. After that initial enrollment period, for the most part, you cannot get a Medicare supplement without going through underwriting. What that means is that you have to answer medical questions and authorize the insurance company to access your medical records, and they will determine whether or not they want to accept you in the plan. So that's important because someone with a pre-existing condition, especially if it's a serious one like a heart condition or cancer diagnosis, things like that, uh, you want to pay attention to that 65, you know, 65 year initial enrollment period. Um, that's important. Now, there are certain special election periods where you can get a guaranteed issue. So they have to accept you um, and that's going to be you know they're different you know if you if you let's say have an advantage plan and you move one-on-one -on -one basis okay um now in addition to the medicare supplement you would want to get a drug plan the drug plan also has a monthly premium those change from year to year and those plans, you basically, when it comes to drug plans, what you want to do is look for the best coverage on your medications. So there's always going to be some risk with insurance. You can never be guaranteed to have the best plan for your needs in the future because obviously we don't know what the future holds. Um, someone might start out with a great plan, you know, with their three medications. By the end of the year, they're taking five or six. They may not have great coverage on those additional ones, but we can only do the best we can do with the knowledge we have at the moment. So you want to
or that kind of thing. And we'll go into how the drug plan is uh, broken up. That is something that changes from year to year as well. These laws do change a lot. So I am here to keep you, sorry, losing audio. One second. You're okay now, Musia. You're just cutting out a little bit on the internet. Okay, I'm sorry. Do you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. It's just okay. Sorry about that. Every once in a while, it was cutting out a little bit. Okay. Um. Here we are. Okay. So, okay, so we're going through these. Okay, so um, that's pretty much the drug plans. We'll go over the different stages and how exactly they work, but essential coverage, and um, we'll go into more detail on that later. Now, the other option, if you don't want to go the Medicare supplement, is the Medicare Advantage route. Now, with the Medicare Advantage, they work a little differently. Sorry, one second. I'm not showing the chat anymore. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, excuse me one second here. Hold on, where are we here? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, I hope my audio is still good here. Um, yeah, I think what's happening is when you um, go to your slides, it's um, it's dragging on the internet a little bit. And, and so oh, interesting. when you change slides, sometimes it lags. Okay, so then I'll give it some extra time there. Just keep me posted if it breaks up again. Um, okay. So here we are. Okay. Uh, okay, so the advantage plans. Let's just do that right now. Okay, so the way the advantage plans work um obviously you also have to have the medicare a and b in order to get that now the advantage plan service a specific plan area so they're not the type of plan that you can just go wherever you want whenever you want um you do need to have a an assigned primary care physician um most advantage plans i'll talk about because we're in palm springs area uh right now most of the plans are HMOs. Uh, well, at this very moment, they're all HMOs. So what that means is that you would have an assigned primary care physician. Anything medical that comes up, you would go to that doctor and then they would refer you to specialists as needed. Um, got another chat here. Okay, so they would refer you to specialists as needed and these plans for the most part have a zero dollar monthly premium so they're kind of nice as far as cost goes um they do services specific plan area again because it is an age have to be within the same medical group so essentially when you choose a doctor you also are choosing a medical group and you will see specialists within that group okay um i'm assuming my my vo my uh volume here is still good uh my audio uh anyway okay now these plans have they do have uh co-pays for the various medical benefits uh and services so you'll oftentimes see zero dollars for primary doctor zero dollars for specialists but then you might see fifty dollars for an mri 
uh, $90 at the emergency room, $200 for an ambulance, and so on. The list goes on. There are set co-pays for every medical service or benefit that's covered. And these plans do have a maximum out of pocket. So this way you know that in the course of a year, regardless of what happens to you medically, you will not pay more than X amount of dollars in the year. Okay. Uh, now, as far as, okay, so that pretty much, now, okay, most, this I did not say, most uh, Medicare Advantage plans, which are also called Part C plans, they generally include drug coverage at no additional cost. So you'll see if you get a standalone drug plan, you will have a monthly premium. If you get it included in your Medicare Advantage plan, you generally will not pay any more for it. Uh, it'll just be the zero dollars. There are some plans that have a little bit of a premium because they have more benefits or you know whatever it is. But for the most part, you're looking at zero dollars monthly. So that's kind of nice. If you know if you're not particular. Another thing with an HMO is that you do have uh, uh, you need authorization for different medical services. So for example, if your primary doctor says you need uh, you know, such and such a surgery, procedure, test, uh, whatever it is, oftentimes it has to be authorized by, by the insurance company or rather the medical group. And they have to you know, give you the go ahead for that before you can, uh, before you can benefit from those services. They have to feel like it's medically necessary. Um, okay. Okay, so that's that. We spoke about that. Okay, now with the Part D drug plans, there are what they do is Medicare requires every plan to cover at least one medication for every symptom. Okay, so they're not allowed to say, well, we're not going to cover a medication for whatever the symptom is. However, they don't necessarily have to cover the medication that you want to take, okay? So that's why it's very important to look at this before you choose a plan. You want to know exactly what they're going to cover and what they're not. Now, what they do is they take their list of medications that they cover, which is called a formulary, and they divide the formulary into tiers, usually five or six tiers, and generally it goes from the lowest cost to the highest cost, tier one, two, and so on. Now, the difference between how the different drug plans do this is that sometimes a plan will take an expensive medication that generally is, let's say, a tier three, and they'll make it a tier two, which makes it cheaper for the member or the beneficiary. And that's something you want to look out for. Because, for example, if you're taking insulin, it's very pricey. You want to keep an eye on how much the for it because if one company is going to put it in a tier three or four chances are you're going to pay a lot more than a company that's going to put it as a tier two so that's important especially if you're taking brand new medications or generally expensive medications like insulin or um whatever okay any other expensive medication so that's important now i want to just a second Okay, there. I can only see the the uh, chat sometimes when I close the share screen. So I have a question. The primary difference between option one and two is that one is a PPO, two is an HMO. Generally speaking, yes. Another big difference is the cost because with this Medicare supplement, you're paying a lot more out of pocket. So that's monthly cost just to have the plans. And if you go with the HMO plan, you're generally paying $0 monthly. So for someone who's really healthy and is not particular about which doctors they go to, the HMO plan would, de would definitely be more cost effective. But then again, if you feel like I'm healthy now, but I don't know about the future, and in the future I may be particular about doctors, uh, then you might wanna consider the Medicare supplement because remember when people want a Medicare supplement, oftentimes it's because it's, they have some condition where it will be too late to get the Medicare supplement. So that's a consideration to take into account, um, you know, as far as planning for the future, even if it doesn't apply to you at the moment, okay? Um, and then about the insulin, 
Um, so what I was saying about insulin and generally with expensive medication is that one company may have better coverage on a medication, on a particular medication than another. So if one company puts the medication at tier three and another one at tier two, you likely will wanna go with the one that puts the medication at tier two because it means you're gonna have lower out-of-pocket cost, okay? Um, so insulin, and, and this is gonna be big for 2021, okay? Because they're getting a little competitive as far as insulin goes. Um, there's, there's definitely gonna be better cost sharing for those who are taking insulin. So that's something to really look into. Unfortunately, Medicare.gov is not gonna be completely updated on the cost of insulin with all the different plans. So that's something to, uh, always good to speak to an agent who's keeping tabs on the different companies that are not updated on Medicare.gov. Uh, Medicare.gov is a wonderful website. It's by Medicare, by CMS, and it has a ton of information on everything Medicare. It also has a drug search tool um, but again, not everything gets updated, especially not right when they're changing benefits. I do want to say about the drug plans that they change, they change benefits from year to year, as do the Advantage plans. So those HMO plans, they change benefits every year. What that means is that you can very easily see a difference in premium costs from one year to the next. Um, Last year, there was a plan for, I'm going to give ballpark numbers here, but let's say around $15 a month. And, the, and January 2020 came around, and that same plan went up to $84 a month. So anyone who didn't read the fine print in the letters that were sent to them had a little bit of surprise when they started getting charged $84. And we'll talk about enrollment periods, but you cannot always make a change when it comes to drug plans. Um, okay, now I do have to do this again. Okay, here we go. Okay, someone asked about naturopathic doctors um, and high cap. Okay, so naturopathic doctors, if they're contracted with a medical group, you can go to them so long as uh, so long as they're in the medical group and you know they allow for that. Uh, if you're talking about with a Medicare supplement, they have to be able to bill Medicare. So they have to be contracted with Medicare. There are some doctors that can and some that cannot. So I know of some who are not, I don't know if I would say they're not purely naturopathic or I guess they do enough where they can contract with Medicare and then you're fine there. But if it's someone that's, uh, you know, that can't, for whatever reason, contract with Medicare, then no, it won't be covered. So that's important. If with a Medicare supplement, you can only go to doctors that accept Medicare, that are contracted with them. And with the HMO plans, you can only go to doctors that are within a medical group. And you obviously have to have your assigned primary care physician first. You know, you have to see them before you do anything else, before you go to any other doctors. If you go to another doctor within the medical group, but without doing it via primary and then getting the referral and being authorized and so on, you are out of pocket 100%, okay? So bear that in mind. Um, we have another, okay. Functional medicine, yeah. Okay, I'm just reading the chats here. Um, Oh, okay, as far as high cap, I have no idea what based on your medication, your doctors, uh, which benefits are better for you, especially for those who want the Advantage plan. Um, it's important, oh, I'm frozen. Hold on a second. Okay, is that better? I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, I hope that's better. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so moving right along. Can you repeat the high cap uh, information you were talking about? That's where you broke up. Okay, so high cap generally does, um, they basically do the same thing that I'm doing. They offer the same type of information. The only difference is that they don't actually work with each of the companies individually. So what I do is, uh, right now we're doing Medicare 101, so I'm giving you the general information, um, but I am available to service each of you, you know, one-on-one -on -one where we look at your medications, we look at your list of doctors, we look at your needs and budget, and I mean, we don't have to go into all those details, but just as far as determining if you want one plan over the other and kind of finding the plan that has the most benefits for you, the most that are the most suitable for you. So that's the important thing to look at. Um, and as far as if HiCap is having classes, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I just sure. saw on uh, I just saw online they are, but they charge forty five dollars. So oh, that's interesting. Welcome to our okay. free informational session. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Also. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but I do not charge for any of my services. I get paid directly by the insurance companies. So that's, if that's a concern for anyone, I absolutely do not charge anyone for anything. <laughs> um, okay, so this is how the Part D works, the drug plan. There are four stages. Um, Medicare has standards of what they require within a drug plan, what it should look like. So the numbers that you see here, okay, I, they are updated for the next year, but it's gonna look a little bit different than 2020. And this is why. The annual deductible, the standard, is gonna be $445. Now, some plans have a lower deductible, anywhere between zero and 445. Nobody will have a higher deductible. Um, most of the HMO plans have a $0 deductible, okay, on the drug part. Now, once you met your deductible, and I do wanna just add in really quickly here that some plans, even if they have a deductible, they will say like tiers one and two have no deductible. So if you're just taking the lower cost generic medications, you have no concerns about a deductible that will be covered um, at the co-pays that are in the next stage, okay? And that's initial coverage. So once you've met your deductible, you go to initial coverage. In initial coverage, there's a set dollar amount or percentage, which is called a coinsurance. So it's a copay or a coinsurance that you are responsible for. Um, it'll look something like tier one, $5, tier two, $10, tier three, $45, tier four, uh, 25%, and tier five, uh, 33%. That's a basic, I mean, they're all a little bit different. Um, what that means is based on your medications, you want to see what tiers they're in, in each of the plans and determine where you'll get the most, uh, or let's say the, which plan would be the most cost effective for you. Okay. Um, second. Okay. So. I was just reading a chat right there. Okay, and we are back to this. Okay, so once you and the insurance company together you first start Closing. They, they've been working on closing the donut hole slowly, and now they technically closed it for 2021. But what it means is once you've reached this stage, you are now responsible for 25% of all your medications. Okay? So 25%, one second, I need to make sure my. One second here. Okay. Am I, do you still hear me? Oh, don't hear, okay, back again. Okay, so what I was saying about the donut hole is that once you hit the donut hole, 
you basically are responsible for 25% of all the costs of your medication. And um, there are some plans that will give you a little bit of leeway with tiers one and two, but for the most part, you're responsible. And then, I want to move through this a little bit quicker because, okay. Um, once you, okay, so basically in the coverage gap, once you yourself have spent $6,550, so that's just you and any manufacturer discounts goes towards this number, then you move to, the, to catastrophic coverage. Um, I want to say in the coverage gap, the cost of your medication may go up or down depending on what you were paying prior. Although for 2021, it's going to look pretty similar to the initial coverage stage because um, the way that they are pricing medications and initial coverage. Uh, so that would be the difference there. Uh, once you hit the catastrophic coverage stage, you pay the higher amount of either 5% or $3 and change, 370 on generic, $9.20 on brand. That takes you until the end of the year, starts again in January. Obviously with new numbers, they wanna keep you on your toes. <laughs> um, as far as enrollment periods, uh, part D, obviously you can enroll when you're first eligible for part A or A and B, okay? So if your A and B are different dates, then you're going to want to make sure prior, you know, with along with your part A, if it's two separate dates, um, if it's the same date, you'll sign up right away for part D. Uh, after that, though, every year between October 15th and December 7th, you have an opportunity to switch drug plans that take effect January 1st. Okay, so that's important. You cannot switch plans throughout the year uh, when it comes to drug plans unless you have a specific situation, special election period. Okay. Um, okay, so here it's just showing the annual enrollment period from October 15th to December 7th is unique for Medicare Advantage plans and drug plans. All those plans will take effect January 1st. This does not matter if you have uh, Medi-Cal or not, okay? It's for everybody. Um, Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. This is specific for those who are already on a Medicare Advantage plan. They have a special election period between January 1st and March 31st where they can make one change that takes effect the following month. So if it's any time in January, it'll take effect March 1st and so on. Um, one change, you cannot make multiple changes in that period of time. And then there's special enrollment period and that's for if someone loses employment coverage, moves out of the plan service area, receives assistance from the state. So like Medi-Cal or low income subsidy, uh, those people with that uh, also called extra help. Uh, you can make a change once every quarter to take effect the following month in the first nine months of the year. And again, these are the kind of things that if you want to be in touch with me separately, I will, I will help you figure out when the next election period is for you based on your situation. Um, there are certain situations when someone has a chronic illness that they can have a special election period. Um, they can use it once. Once it's used up, it's used up and it lasts for as long as they have the chronic illness, okay? So basically, having said that, um, we didn't touch on Medi-Cal so much. I wanna say that those with Medi-Cal, uh, depending on if they have full Medi-Cal or not, if, there's, if they have full Medi-Cal, likely Medi-Cal will cover their Part B premium that we spoke about, the 144.60. Um, they will cover that for you. And there are special plans that are unique for those with Medicare and Medi-Cal. Uh, they generally have more benefits and, um, and they have benefits that are most likely more beneficial for those with Medi-Cal. Um, if someone has, okay, so let's say someone does not qualify for Medi-Cal, but still has low income, then there's also LIS which is low income subsidy, also known as extra help. That is through social security. And what it is, is it just helps cover the cost of drug plans and coverage on medication. So 
what we're talking about there is they would cover your monthly premium on a drug plan. They would also lower the cost. So there are different levels of LIS, but uh, you know, level one through four, depending on the level, there is a set dollar amount or percentage that you would be responsible for. It's super helpful for those who do have a low income, uh, um, whether or not you have Medi-Cal. So those with Medi-Cal usually have LIS, but you do not need Medi-Cal in order to have LIS. I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's very important for those who, uh, especially if you have expensive medications and low income, and it's just super helpful in that case. Let me just see what we have here. Um, yes, so someone mentioned the about the Medicare plan finder tool. I did mention that earlier. It's a great tool. Uh, I just do want you to take into account that there are certain things that will not be updated on time for open enrollment, uh, especially if you're taking insulin. They don't have, they won't have everything updated on there for 2021. Um, possibly in the beginning of 2021, it will be updated, but in the meantime, there are certain plans that will not have everything updated on there. Um, but it is great. Definitely, you know, play around on there and see what you can find. Um, someone asked about long-term health insurance, how that works with Medicare. That's a great question. Medicare covers, uh, covers 100 days in a skilled nursing facility. So once that time is used up, then you are responsible for everything uh, out of pocket, okay? The only time you're not is if you have Medi-Cal. And then depending on if you have share of cost or not, um, I would say that, well, we'll speak about if someone uh, has full Medi-Cal, then they would cover the long-term care um, it would be in a state facility, obviously. Now, there is a different, um, if someone used up what Medicare covers, then you can also get a long-term care insurance policy that's unique for long-term care. And that would kick in once Medicare has paid for the first uh, you know, chunk of time. Um, that's for skilled nursing facility, but also you know, for home, not regular home health care, but if someone needs assistance with activities of daily living, then you would look into long-term long care insurance for that. Um, otherwise, based on assets on their long-term care, so if they need assistance with daily living or whatever it is, um, once, once they spend down to qualify for Medi-Cal, then Medi-Cal will kick in um, but again, it will be at a state facility. So that's pretty much that. Any regarding anything I spoke about or anything I did not speak about, um, you have my information. Let me put this up here again, one second. Okay, so. There we are. Okay, so you have my information there, phone number, it's a direct line. You have my email, feel free to, tr feel free to write it down. Um, you can email me or call me with any questions. I'm happy to help out um, you know, as much as possible. Um, I'm going to, well, let's see if I can open this real quick here. Now I have to stop my share one second. Okay, let's just see, we have some questions here. Okay, oh, okay, so they're in the chat. If you don't see on the screen, in the chat is my name, phone number, and email. Uh, vision dental hearing coverage varies by plan, yes. So if you're looking at the HMO plans that have all those extra benefits, um, or I should say the possibility of all those extra benefits that are non-medical, they definitely vary by plan. So we're talking about vision, dental, hearing, acupuncture, chiropractic care, gym membership, transportation to medical appointments, transportation to non-medical appointments. Um, there's some plans that will give you, let's say you're admitted to the hospital. When you come home, they'll send you breakfast, lunch, and dinner for you know, a week or four weeks, depending on the plan. Um, after hospital stay, they'll send someone to your house. And by the way, this is at no cost to you. They'll send someone to help you with bathing, dressing, um, 
changing linens, light housework, light cooking, things like that. So that's another wonderful benefit. Uh, there are plans that would give you an over, over the counter benefit. So that means you have X amount of dollars. Every plan is going to be a little different, but you know, 20, I would say 20 to $150 every quarter. This is the ballpark. It is the, the general, uh, you know, generally what we see in the different plans. But those, you know, you'll have that allowance that you can spend on over the counter items. So they'll have a, a catalog, or you could do online, or over the phone, or by mail, whatever you like. And you can order over the counter items at no cost to you. You'll just have a set amount that you can spend, and that's an amazing benefit. Um, there are some plans that will help with, uh, oh, there's some plans that have the personal emergency response system, the button that, you know, you press it, I fell, I can't get up. Those will be covered. Um, there, are, there are a whole bunch of benefits that these plans can cover. And, uh, because for some people, you know, if they're not wearing glasses, then that vision benefit doesn't matter so much, they may prefer to go to a plan coverage on hearing aids and some that really don't. So whatever your um, so someone asked if you're eligible to sign up in November, oh, eligible to sign up in November, when do I need to start planning for the supplement plans? So I don't know if eligible to sign up means that your birthday is in November or it's in February, but once you sign up for part A and B and you get your Medicare number, that's when you can sign up for any plans. There are some situations where I'll have a client, if it's getting close to the end of the sign up date, um, you know, to get coverage right away, I'll have them sign an application and I'll submit it even without a Medicare number. And this is in certain situations, so you just have to be careful with this, but it will be when the company will be okay holding on to the application and giving a retroactive effective date. So that's very specific. You definitely wanna work with an agent if you're gonna do something like that. Um, but let's say birthday's in November, three months before, sign up. But as soon as you can sign up, I would do it. With social security, I have clients who signed up and had a number within five days, and I have clients who signed up and had a number two months later. Um, so there's no telling how long it'll take. I recommend just doing it as soon as possible. But the earliest is three months before your birthday month, okay? Um, and again, if your birthday is on the first of the month, you have an extra month. It'll Your coverage would start instead of November 1st, it would start October 1st. Uh, if you're taking I'll see, we lost you again. She's trying to reconnect, it looks like. There she comes. There you go. Now you're on mute. Hold on just a second. I unmute you. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, Hear me? I don't know yes. what just happened there. <laughs> okay, so yeah. um, one second. Let's get this. Okay, so basically I would say just sign up as soon as you can. Um, as far as how to sign up, you can sign up online. Um, if, you're, if it's when you're turning 65, then you go to ssa.gov 
That's the website, SSA for Social Security Administration.gov. And um, you just search, put in the search tab. There's a magnifying glass. You click on that and you write in the search tab, apply Medicare online. It's pretty uh, straightforward as far as, you know, filling in everything. They will want you to start a My Social Security account. So you'll put in username, password. Um, now they often, I mean, they will ask you for identifying information. Uh, they can ask you for anything that would show on a credit report. So they might ask you which of these addresses have you lived at any time in your lifetime. Um, they might ask you which bank you got a mortgage from. This could have been 30 years ago. They can ask you anything that's on your credit report. So if you feel like you won't know the answers, I always recommend getting a free credit report just so you have the information there. Um, but in any case, once you get through that, you can sign up for the Medicare. Um, if you have employment coverage, that's creditable, okay? So we don't really talk about penalties, but if Medicare thinks that your coverage is creditable, which is basically if you have employment coverage for a company that has at least 20 employees, then that, that's considered creditable. Otherwise, you're not considered taken care of as far as Medicare goes. And when you eventually do sign up, you will have penalties. Those penalties last for life. Okay. Uh, up regular you know when you're turning 65 in the questions they ask if you want a and b the answer would be yes unless you have the employment coverage then you would say no just the part a so just pay attention to the wording i'm available if anyone has questions when they're doing this you can always call me um one second okay and do pre-existing conditions play a role in any Medicare plans or supplements with approval or premium? Pre-existing conditions do play a role with Medicare plans and supplements. There are specific Medicare Advantage plans that will be available for those with end-stage renal disease. Um, as far as Medicare supplements, I said earlier that when you're first eligible, you can get a Medicare supplement regardless of uh, your medical history background. However, once that initial period ends, you will have to go through underwriting. So they may or may not accept you based on your medical records and it will not affect premiums. The premiums have to be the same. Um, as far as Medi uh, Medicare supplement premiums, just because I didn't mention it earlier, they generally start at one point and do increase once to twice a year. Uh, so that's important to pay attention to. Um, then schedule for someone in Kino, so someone will follow. Okay, so that's someone just wrote about different uh, uh, medical groups having. Um, let's see, one other thing. Okay, so the part D I mentioned in the very beginning about part part B having that penalty if you don't sign up when you're first eligible. Um, sorry, no, the income related with the Part B. If your income is higher, you have an additional premium. Same thing with Part D, as in David. Um, so there's a premium from the insurance company, but then there's also income related that goes to Social Security. So that can be higher. It won't be nearly as high as the Part B premium, but it's higher than the average if you have a higher income. Uh, again, my name is Masia Wichkis. I'm happy to help any of you individually if you have more questions. That'll be it for today. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm sorry about the internet connection. I don't know what happened there. Um, but I think that takes care of it. Thank you so much. All right, and thank you so much, Musi. We're gonna um, record this and put it on our YouTube channel or, and on our Facebook page. So thank you all for watching and we will see you at the library. Take care, have a great day. Bye-bye.